How's it going everyone? This is going to be a video on how to do a paired sample hypothesis test in Excel. So Excel has a tool to do a paired sample t-test and I'll show you how to use that. And then there's a trick to do a paired sample z-test as well and I'll show you that trick. So here's some data we have for this demonstration. Uh, something is being measured, there's uh, data for before, data for after. Every row here corresponds to a pair. Okay, so maybe this is 10 different people that are measured on a scale and their results for before and after are shown, right? So 12, 12, right? Person one didn't show a change. Person two went from 14 to 15, person three from 13 to 16, and so on. And we wanna do a paired sample t-test. So you go to the data tab on top and go to this data analysis button. If you don't have the data analysis button, you just have to change some settings to get it. And I'll put a link to a video in the description of this one that it'll, it'll explain how to get the data analysis button. So you click data analysis and there's a bunch of options here. And the options you want, this one right here, t-test paired to sample for means. Okay, that's the paired sample t-test. Select that, click OK. And then you have to fill in some inputs. So variable one range, click this up arrow and highlight the data for the, uh, well, in our case, it's, it's the first column for before. Variable two range, click this up arrow, then click and drag to highlight the data for the other half of the information, right? The other set of uh, paired data. Then we have our hypothesized mean difference. Okay, let's say we put zero. Okay, so the hypothesis, the null hypothesis is that there is no change, okay, between the before and after data. Labels, you will want that checked if when you were highlighting your variable ranges, if you highlighted the labels as well. In our case, the labels are before and after. Now we did not highlight those labels, so we will keep this not checked. Alpha, your significance level, put in whatever you want for that. I'm gonna keep it at 0 0.05. And then output range, okay? Select output range, and then click this little up arrow. Click where you want the output to be. Click that down arrow after and then select OK. And your results will appear on the screen. For each variable, it'll show the mean value and the variance. Remember the variance is the standard deviation squared. You have your number of observations, you have your Pearson correlation, that's the R value, that correlation coefficient. Uh, you have the hypothesized mean difference that we input, zero degrees of freedom is nine. And then we have our test static, our critical values, and our p-values. I'm just gonna bring those to three decimal places so it's easier to read. So we have our test static, negative 1.561. How Excel calculates the test static, so it takes the before values and subtracts the after values. Okay, why? Because we defined before as our variable one. It'll take the variable one values and subtract the variable two values, okay? If it were to do it the other way around, then this would be a positive number instead of a negative. So keep that in mind when reading the test static, whether you want to perceive it as a positive or negative value. Then we have our one-tailed results and our two-tailed results. The critical values, Excel gives the positive values, so based on whether you're imagining this to be a uh, two-tailed test or a left tail or a right tail test, you'll have to understand whether you should consider these numbers to be positive or negative. In our case, if the null hypothesis is that there is no difference, then we're looking at a two-tailed test. So we actually have two critical values, positive 2.262 and negative 2.262. In either case, our test static negative 1.561 does not reach the critical values, so we do not reject the null hypothesis, and we conclude that, yes, in fact, we'll stick to the assumption that uh, 
these two conditions uh, do, do not show a, a statistically significant difference. If you prefer the p-value method, well, we see our p-value 0.153, which is certainly bigger than 0 0.05, which is what we selected as our significance level. So once again, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Now, let's say you wanted to do a paired sample Z test. Okay, let's say you know what the population standard deviation is for the change that occurred within uh, each pair. So if you go to data and data analysis, there is no paired sample Z test. The only Z test is for two independent samples. But there is a trick that you can do. And here's the trick, okay? Create an Excel column where you're actually going to calculate the difference. Okay, and we'll stick to how Excel likes it, how we did it before, uh, for t-test before value minus after value. So we have all of our differences right here. And now what we're actually going to do is we're going to do a single sample hypothesis test on these difference values to see if we can uh, stick to the null hypothesis that the mean value is zero or not. Okay, now that's the same as this paired sample t-test, the hypothesis that the mean of the differences is zero. So if we go to data, we select data analysis, we go z-test to sample. Now again, there's no single sample z-test in Excel but we can trick Excel into doing it anyways. So for that, we need to create a dummy variable. This is like our second, uh, our second sample for a two sample Z test. And we're just gonna put a couple of zeros there. Three zeros is enough. And then we click data analysis. We select that Z test two samples for the mean, click OK, and we need a variable one range. There's our variable one, our differences. Our variable two range, our variable two, well, that's our dummy variable. Okay, sometimes this is called the uh, fool's method, okay, because it fools Excel into, into doing a single sample hypothesis test. Okay, hypothesized mean difference is zero. Now we need to put in the variances. So remember, variance is standard deviation squared because if you're doing a z-test, it means you know what the population variance is. So for variable one, uh, let's let's say it's uh, two, right? Just uh, looking at these numbers, right? And for variable two, well, the variance is zero, but if you put in zero, Excel won't accept that. So we fool Excel again by putting in something very close to zero, like 0 0.00001. And again, labels, you wanna check if you highlighted the labels when you were clicking and dragging to select your uh, variable one and two ranges. And we were not selecting our, uh, our labels here when we were doing that. So we're gonna keep labels unchecked. We'll keep the same alpha value, output range, click that up arrow, select where you want the data output to be, click that down arrow after, right, this down arrow here, and then click OK. And there's your output, okay? So it gives you the mean value of the differences, that's our variable one, you can ignore the information here for variable two, Okay, we have our known variance that we input, number of observations, 10, hypothesized mean difference, right? Hypothesized mean difference, just like here. Then we have our test static. It is a little bit different, negative 1.565 instead of negative 1.561, as it should be because our variance here is two. Whereas if we were to look at the standard deviation of these differences, well, it wouldn't be, uh, the variance of these differences wouldn't be exactly two. It would be a little bit off, but pretty close, right? Our test static is pretty similar. And then we have our 
critical values and p-values for one tail and for two tails. Now, like before, the critical values given are positive. It's up to you to decide whether those values should be positive or negative, depending on what it is you're looking for. If we're doing a two-tail test to see if there is a significant difference or not, right? If the mean value is significantly away from zero or not, well, there's our critical values, positive and negative, 1.96 approximately. Whereas our test static is negative 1.56. So it does not reach negative 1.96. And so we do not reject the null hypothesis. And so we stick to our null hypothesis that uh, the mean difference is zero. Or in other words, there is no statistically significant difference between the before data and after data. And that's how you do a paired sample hypothesis test, t-test, or z-test in Excel. So I hope that helps, and until next time.